Hey hey, I'm going to do a quick wrap up for me. So, four books, not bad. I need four books. Where shall we start? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This was a read along for Mike's Book Reviews Discord server, hashtag classics. And it's a delightful Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. It's just a beautiful book. Illustrated by the author and yeah, I'd never read this before and I did see the film but I must have been, I don't know, 15, younger possibly even, don't remember a thing about it other than Jack Nicholson's in it and he probably steals the show. He plays the main character, the guy that shows up and disrupts the psychiatric ward and boy does he ever, yep, R.P. Randall I think his name is. You'd think I would remember having only just read it. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Look at the back. Nice bit of storyline being depicted there in comic book form. And the spine as well. It's just... It's a beautiful object. I enjoyed it a lot. I really did. It was quite an interesting read. I kind of had an idea what it was about. Jack Nicholson in the psychiatric ward. I didn't really get the whole fight between him and the nurse. I think that was quite well done. Nurse Ratched. It was... I think that she was a bit wooden, actually. I would like to have had a bit more about her background to get an idea of what her motivations might have been. We know that she was a nurse in the army, uh, but that's really all we know. And there is a short mention of something she gets up to at weekends but other than that it's just the nurse at work we do get some of the main characters background which is really interesting and it's narrated by an Indian and he is mute through the story almost up until the end and it's narrated from his point of view about the disruption that happens so that was that. Very enjoyable. Next up was another Discord server read-along. The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I started to listen to this on audio and I remember driving from Perth in Scotland towards Glasgow, having to be rerouted because traffic was so bad we weren't going to make our ferry. So we rerouted to Clonig, Skipness in Argyll which added another three hours onto the drive. It was me and my wife and my son. So it was like, right, stick an audio book on. And I listened to chapter one, which for some reason is really long. And the audio book is fantastic. The narrator is superb. But for some reason it just wasn't going in. And I often have this problem with audio books that I'm just starting because I'm not familiar with the characters and so it takes more work more concentration, more focus and, you know, I was driving so, and I was stressed because we had a ferry that we might or might not make, which would mean getting home or not getting home, island life. So I got home again and listened to it again and the same thing happened. I found myself spacing, my mind wandering, wasn't picking up. Plus there's a lot of vocabulary that is made up, you know, we're in a fictional fantasy world, so vocabulary that was unfamiliar, so I bought the book. It's only out in hardback, I had to pay 22 quid for it, but boy is it nice. It's got a really nice soft touch on the dust jacket, it feels delightful to hold. And it's just as an object, yes, I'm all for it. About halfway through it really started to pick up, and it's, it's kind of a detective story, Sherlock Holmes and Watson kind of deal. It follows a young, a young apprentice police officer, for want of a better word, and he's attached to a detective. And there's a murder that takes place. There you go, you can take a drink. Murder. You're welcome. And it's a very strange murder. It's most strange murder I think I've ever read in any book, so I won't spoil it for you, but it's it's just 
interesting, strange, bewildering, and not just to the reader, also to the the police officer who's there to take a look. He's like, never seen anything like it. Nor had his detective companion. So it picks up from there. They have a mystery to solve. There are more murders that take place, and it's just like how they solve it. The most interesting thing in the whole book is the magic system, and it's it's to do with imprinting. So the main character has vials of strong smelling liquids, and he smells the liquids and then reviews the murder scene or interviews suspects, and he's able to then recall exactly what went down by sniffing the same vial again and all of these memories come back to him. So he basically is like a like a zoom recorder but for sight and sound and smell and all of that. And it, it interests me because it makes me think of when I'm listening to audiobooks and I can often place myself exactly where I was when I heard a specific part of a book. Like when Caledon in Way of Kings escapes from his slavery I'm walking down the hill. I can picture the exact location, that kind of thing. So that's imprinting in a different way. And it's just, it's fascinating how they do it. <clears throat> this is one of the kinds of augmentations that the characters in this novel can have. There are other kinds of augmentations as well. So it's, I won't spoil any of that for you. I'd recommend it. I gave it four stars, as I think I did. Now, this might have been three and a half. Can't recall exactly. Next one up, Assassin's Quest, Robin Hobb. <clears throat> this is, I just loved it, absolutely loved it. This is the, the third and final book in the Farseer trilogy. This is my third read of the Farseer trilogy. And I finished this sitting outside there on the porch at sunset. Beautiful sunny day and just... Got moved to tears, almost. In fact, I'm sure there were tears in my eyes. It's just such a delightful, delightful series. And it's funny, because when I read it the second time, I remember not really rating it so highly. And I looked at my review on Goodreads, which said that I found it juvenile. I don't know what was going on back in 2015 or 2014. But, yeah, I take it back. I've left the review up just because I don't want to edit my own history, but what was I thinking? I think it's perhaps because I had the audiobook on at two times speed and I was not really paying close attention to it. That's what I'll put it down to. This time I read the physical copy, which, you know, I'm really enjoying actually physical books right now more than I ever have before, or as much perhaps. Because I always have enjoyed physical books. But reading slowly is now my thing. And this 2x audiobook thing. I'm kind of on the fence about that. So, yeah, Fitz, the main character. He has magic systems going on. The skill and the wit, which are the two different magic systems in these books. The skill allows you to communicate with other people telepathically and to sense or to manipulate their feelings. There's different ways it can be used. It's a very interesting magic system. And the wit allows you to bond with animals. So he has both going on. And he's the only character in the story that has both, which makes it super interesting just to see how it plays out. And I could actually remember... There's the ending scenes, which I won't spoil, but they were up here, certain parts of it I did remember, and I was excited to get to them because I remember being excited by it the first time, and I wasn't disappointed. In fact, anything but. I was like, <laughs> woohoo! You know. So that's the third of the four books. The fourth book was on the shelf, hang on. <clears throat> the fourth book 
was Rhythm of War, Brandon Sanderson. So big, they split it into two parts. This one, the fourth book of the Stormlight Archive. I've read the first three books twice because I left it so long before I picked up Rhythm of War, which is partly because the third one, Oathbringer, kind of burned me out. I got a bit like, struggled with it. And so I thought I'll, I'll take a break when I finished Oathbringer and because it's so dense I was having a look online at some of the stuff from Oathbringer to remind myself before I picked this up and I was like I, I barely remember any of this. Because it's so dense I think reading Stormlight Archive is, is very rewarding but it's a lot of work. right? It's kind of like studying for a degree in some ways. You've got to put the time in there's so much going on that a single read, at least for me, it's not enough. So rereading the first three, again, was spectacular. My favourite is actually Way of Kings, which is unusual, I think. I think most Stormlight Archive fans tend to prefer the second one, Words of Radiance. But for me, it was the, the Dalinar story about honour. Act with honour and honour will aid you. That's the phrase that really made the first one stick in my mind as something meaningful at this stage in my life, you know, act with honour and honour will aid you. And I just loved that book. Second one, yep, terrific. Third one, mm, okay. Fourth one, do you know when I started it? January. That should tell you something. Took me a while to get through it. Audiobook, yes. Driving, spacing out, missing chunks. I'm like, I don't know. So I bought the physical books. Mainly because I wanted to review a certain character's POV, which is Venley and Eshenai. They have flashbacks in this. I mean, every Stormlight Archive book has flashbacks from a certain character. Rhythm of War, it's Venley and Eshenai. And I, I feel like I just missed so much in the audiobook when I was driving so I wanted to to review those chapters in particular and, you know refresh myself on some of the stuff didn't sink in an audiobook format so it worked you know I found it a really worthwhile exercise and then when I picked it back up after having left it for a month maybe longer picked it back up around about the 70% mark in the audiobook. And then it was like, ooh, it's what they call the Sander Lunch, which is where basically you slog through the book until you get to the last maybe 20% and it, it, you get crushed in a, an avalanche of emotion and it becomes like a, a fairground ride, like woohoo. And it really was like that. There were moments where I was actually tearing up, shouting out, goosebumps on my arm, just like, whoa. So, yes, and as soon as I finished it, then it was safe to go on to the Copper Mind or the 17th Shard or whatever the online wiki's called. It's a dangerous place to hang out because of spoilers. As soon as you load the page, it comes up with a big warning saying, beware, there be spoilers. And I'm like, Right, I don't really want to dig into any of the characters because I might get spoiled. But then I felt I was safe to go on. And was I? I don't know because Cosmere, the Cosmere is big. These books, if you don't know, and I'm sure you will if you've read any of them, they're set in the Cosmere, which is Brandon Sanderson's universe. So it's not just the Stormlight Archive. It's also Mistborn and some of the side books and I don't even know what, because I've not read the other ones. So, yeah, there still are spoilers, but... I did read Warbreaker, which I think was an important one to have read in order to understand some parts of Rhythm of War. So, if you're thinking about reading Rhythm of War and you haven't read Warbreaker, I would recommend that you do that. For a certain magic system thing, it's worth doing. So, those are my four books for May. It's been a good month. It's been an excellent month. I've really enjoyed the books I've read. There have been no unenjoyable books at all. So 
that's a win. That's a win. What's going on in June? Well, a bunch of things. Natasha's dance, Orlando Fiji's. I'm really keen to get to this. My Russian TBR, Soviet TBR, is is getting bigger, and I'm not getting to them. So I'm going to read that. Also, another Robin Hobb book. This is the Life Ship Traders book one. This is another beautiful mass market paperback that I bought back in the day when I first read this in 2001. I haven't read it since. I decided I was going to read one book from the Realm of the Elderlings series every month until I finish them, because I've only read these two trilogies. This one I haven't read since 2001, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's, what, 2nd of June, and I'm like halfway. <laughs> it's just such a ride. I'm enjoying it immensely. And I'm sure I'll finish it in the next week, just because I'm enjoying it so much. And then I'll have a chance to get to... Well, this is my online uh, book club, Simon Heisel's Read Along, which I'm following. This is a reread again, and I'm thoroughly enjoying War and Peace immensely. That's a year-long thing, though. I've also got my own Read Along... Crime and Punishment, which I'm writing a chapter analysis for every week and posting it up on my Substack. This is a great book. Again, though, it's another year-long quest. This one, The Tale of Genji, I'm reading with Benjamin McAvoy's book club, the Hardcore Literature Book Club. I'll be honest with you, I'm struggling with it. I don't know if I'm going to keep going. I'm at page, where am I at, 101. It's just not clicking. I don't really care, but I know from Benjamin McAvoy's content that it's worth, it's worth struggling with because it's a, it's a classic, you know, and that's why I'm in Benjamin McAvoy's club because I want to read more classics and, you know, so maybe I'll give it another 50 pages and see how it goes. Maybe. And also, it's another Mike's Book Reviews Discord server hashtag classics for June is East of Eden by John Steinbeck, which I've read before. I've got it on Kindle. I've got a paperback and an omnibus John Steinbeck as well. So I would like to read that again. Don't know if we'll have time, but I think so. I think so. So that's me going into June. How's your May been? I'm going to take a look at some of my booktube subscriptions and see what you've all been up to. See how your May has been. I hope it's been as good for you as it has for me. Another one I forgot to mention, Mistborn. I know I mentioned it in my review there of Stormlight Archive. I have started the first Mistborn book in Audible, so I'm listening to that. Because I was so excited after finishing Rhythm of War, I wanted to get some more Cosmere into me. So I've started Mistborn. So far I'm finding it all right. Not amazing, just all right. So, uh, yeah. And I forgot to mention which Discord the Tainted Cup was for, I think. It's Andrew Watson. He goes by Fool's Tale on Discord. This was his May read. Uh, it's a very enjoyable server. I love the people in there. They're becoming friends and I'm enjoying hanging out there a lot. So, yeah. Hi. <laughs> I forgot this one. Svetlana Alexievich, Boys in Zinc. This was an impulse buy in Waterstones. It's fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. Short excerpts from soldiers who were in Afghanistan in the late 70s into the 80s, Russian soldiers, men and women. Uh, it's eyewitness accounts, it's reportage style. This author I love. I've read her book, uh, Secondhand Time, which is all about the collapse of the Soviet Union. And same sort of deal, talking with actual people who lived in Soviet times and what it's like for them now. And going on into 
you know, the wild capitalism of the 90s. So I know the author, and I, I saw this in the bookshop, read the back, and I was like, yeah, I'm buying this. So it's the kind of book where you can just read, like, uh, some of them are two pages, some are like five, six pages, some of these eyewitness accounts. But it's so easy just to pick up and, and read, like, one one part and get on with your day. So it stays on the desk and I'm sure I'll finish it this month. It's, it's not a long book, so. Forgot to mention it, I'm just slotting that into the video. Cheers. <laughs>